Hi. Hi there. I appreciate you taking the time to do this. Absolutely. You know, um, as an actor, when you take a role, you, you always hope for the best. Uh, you hope it's going to last a long time. At what point in the show did you think to yourself, you know what, I'm going to be doing this character for a while, I think. We were all hopeful in the beginning that we'd be doing it for a while. Uh, it, uh, during the, the filming of season one, I would often say to the, to the gang, we're either making a great show or we're all idiots because we were having so much fun making it, laughing so much at what we were doing. But uh, there was, you know, no real way of knowing how it was going to be received or if it was going to be received. We're a Canadian show that's not on a TV channel. Uh, on paper, it looked like it, it was a fun experiment, but it may not last. And then after a, a couple of seasons and seeing how people took to it and uh, how they reacted, uh, you know, Akiso and I have had a bunch of conversations where he's said that, you know, he'd be quite happy making this show for the rest of his life. This was the last job he ever had. Uh, as long as he gets to keep doing it, he'd be happy. And quite frankly, I'd, I'm, I'm happy to show up to work as long as they're willing to produce it. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, having done a character for a, a bunch of seasons, do you get to a point where, you know, you can say to the writers, whoever, you know, I, I don't know if this really works for the character. I don't know if this really works for me or, hey, I really like this. So let's do more of this. I don't think I've sort of. Oh, sorry. sorry go ahead. No. Yeah, no, I don't. I think that, you know, every time a season comes around and you take a look at the scripts and you see the new kind of surprising stuff that that they've got in store there's kind of really there hasn't I haven't felt there to be a need for that <laughs> there's just like you just like are like what's happening this season this is I didn't expect this where are we going what's happening you know they have a lot of fun and creative ideas so I think for me anyway it's more of like just interesting to see what what they've got in store for the character what they're thinking about for the character for that next season Okay. Such a small writer's room, too. Like, uh, you know, Jared and Jacob wrote, have written the majority of the shows over the seasons, and everyone that they brought in is, is so uh, uh, talented and experienced at what they do. I've never had a moment where I felt like they were, you know, writing the character wrong. They know Dan as well as I know Dan, if not better. And, um, yeah, everyone is... Very good. It's sometimes uh, in the script too. Jared will just be like, "K. Trav yells here," and, and they'll, you know, uh, <laughs> leave a spot for me to come up with a, an insane rant. But for the most part, uh, it's uh, you know, I, I've never felt, oh boy, they're they're taking Dan in a direction he wouldn't go. It's all been organic and natural, and, and uh, makes sense for the character. And it's, uh, I guess it's just been a great, rewarding experience. Now, as an actor, and this really goes to, to either one of you, does it is it easier or harder to to do a character that you've been doing for a bunch of seasons? I mean, the the famili fam excuse me familiarity that's a hard word to say. <laughs> it, there's a positive about that, but then there's also that chance of you start to feel like oh, I've done this before, and, and you're just you know it's hard to get inspired to keep doing it. Well, I mean, with, with season one was a lot of feeling out. It was a lot of figuring out of the characters and uh and then once you we had the characters figured out it, it's much more exciting to play that you know once you've worked out the kinks and figured out this is who they are and this is who they're going to be it's a lot of fun to play and i think with our more sort of british style of shorter seasons and contained stories um you know we're not doing uh you know 30 episode seasons we're not doing 24 episode seasons it's six to seven episodes at a time uh and you know we we don't really shoot for more than a month and a go so at no point have i ever really felt like uh oh i've I mean, there's been a year between like two seasons and doing the tours where i thought i i just want to not wear overalls for a bit <laughs> but uh i i still love playing dan and i've never gotten sick of that of, of the character <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's good. Um, you know, one of the things that I like about the show is that all of the characters are this weird dichotomy of they evolved a lot over the seasons and yet they haven't evolved at all. <laughs> and I, I wonder if either way can sort of talk about how do you see your character? How do you think they've changed over these seasons or have they at all? 
Well, I think, you know, I think Gail certainly, she came into the seasons pretty focused on Wayne. And I think as the seasons have gone on, she sort of like uh, widened (laughs) her options. And now she's (laughs) kind of found her way towards Jim Dickens. So I think in that way, you know, she sort of evolved a little bit. Also, her bars have burned down. So she's had to become an innovative businesswoman. But I think you're right in, in the, that there's still there's still always the core of the character that is the same that 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 it comes down to. So, I mean, every once in a while, she'll still throw Wayne a little attention for sure. <laughs> yeah, I think with, with Dan, uh, you know, in season one, uh, he had uh, uh, a crush on Katie and used to have a cocaine problem. That was probably the the things that people knew the most about him. And from there, he's uh, developed into, uh, you know, a, a feminist LGBTQ ally, uh, you know, this, this uh, uh, tough farmer with a heart of gold. And uh, it's been fun to take uh, a character that could have easily been a one-dimensional, two-dimensional caricature and have him develop into this, you know, unexpected, fully formed, sensitive uh, guy has been uh, really fun and, and nice to play because it's not a character that's been seen too much on. Yeah, I think that's something else I like about the show is that the characters in other hands could be very stereotypical or very predictable. I mean, Gail is a character where in the wrong hands, they would just be very one dimensional. She's she's a corn dog and she's just she wants to be, you know, she's got very focused. And, and in the show, it's a very interesting character to, to see play out. And I mean, it, is that the same feeling that you have about the character? Yeah, I mean, I sort of think of her as uh, somebody who just says exactly what she feels and wants, which, you know, I think she she's like, this is what I want. This is how I'm feeling right now, which I think for a woman is pretty cool. (laughs) I think that's great. She just speaks her mind. But, you know, in this particular world of Letterkenny, (laughs) she is solely focused on on, um, you know, uh, on getting what she wants. So I think, yeah, I think it's I think it's certainly fun to find the nuance in it and see how far you can push that and play around with it. And I think the same way with Dan as well. Yeah. Um, you know, it's very easy, especially you know, a small town farmer to just be uh, a stereotypical redneck. And, and I love that the show has rejected that concept. Small town people, they're not all ignorant. They're not all hateful. And, uh, you know, they presented this guy who, who will fight if he has to, but is, uh, you know, really a, a softie who, who wants everyone to, to be happy. And um, it's, it's, it's been uh, terrific to see, you know. I think it's important to see characters on TV that are, uh, you know, hardworking, blue collars, cisgendered uh, men who are not awful. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I know I need to wrap this up, so let me just sort of end it with a, a question to, to both of you. Whenever this show ends, however many seasons down the road it ends, or, or you know, how would you like to see your character end up? Hmm. I think Gail's got to still be running a bar, whether it's the, the, the current Modines or Modines 25, how many of her more <laughs> of her bars burned down. I think she's got to still be out there being savvy businesswoman and like going after what she wants. I think that's all. However that looks, who knows, but I think that's the bottom line. Sounds good. And I, I think Dan's just going to keep uh, keep farming, you know? Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, the, the, that's the one thing about the show that's like, as everything changes around it, the farmers and the farms are always going to be there. So he might end up taking over the chip truck from his mom, but that's about as crazy as he's going to get. <laughs> Yeah, I sort of picture him as a 75-year-old farmer. I could, I could totally see that. I appreciate you both talking to me and, and really enjoy the show. Looking forward to seeing uh, all of the, the new episodes. Well, thanks Great. so much. Thanks for having us. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Thanks for meeting you. Nice to meet you. Bye.